As you can see by the title of this video, today I'm going to be telling you about Douglas Fairbanks. This man is Douglas Fairbanks, a very influential man of the 1920s. Douglas was an actor, a man of the stage per se. He'd lived a thorough life, and I'd say it was to the fullest. Fairbanks didn't play in movies or television shows like we have today. There was no vocal audio to be heard. He'd play in things called silent films. Basically, all of his films that he played in were swashbuckler films. Swashbuckler films were and still are films that portrayed heroic characters that normally had a romantic element within it, and uh, they were adventurous, usually just trying to save some damsel in distress, uh, and well, that, that's really what his films were about. Anyways, a really good example of a swashbuckling movie series is Pirates of the Caribbean. And if you haven't heard of this, you've been living under a rock for the past 20 years, um, so... Sucks to be you. Now let's get into the biography of Douglas Fairbanks. Now, this is going to be pretty long, I'm sorry, but... If you want to know about him, well, you're gonna have to sit through it. To make this easier for me, uh, I'm not going to be looking directly into the camera. I'll be looking at my monitor screen to be reading the text that I have written down. So, yeah. Now, before I start talking, I'm just gonna remind you all to drink water before you say long speeches. <laughs> Delicious. Douglas Fairbanks, son of Hezekiah Charles Allman and Ella Adelaide Ney Marsh, was born in Denver, Colorado on May 23rd, 1883. He had two half-brothers, John Fairbanks Jr. and Norris Wilcox, and a full brother, Robert Payne Allman. His original name was Douglas Elton Thomas Allman, but it was soon changed to Douglas Elton Fairbanks at the age of five. This happened due to his hard-drinking father's abandonment of the family, which enabled his mother to take a surname from a previous marriage for the family. Fairbanks began amateur theater at age 12. This was pretty impressive. I mean, how many of you were in theater when you were 12? He performed on the Denver stage, performing in Summerstock at the Elitch Theater and other productions sponsored by Margaret Feely, who ran an acting school for young people in Denver. Now this is hilarious to me. He attended Denver East High School and was expelled for cutting the wires on the school piano. Not a fan of the piano, I see. Uh, he then left school in the spring of 1899 at the age of 15. There's a lot of controversy over Fairbanks' education, because later in life he both claimed to have attended Colorado School of Mines and Harvard University. Many believe that this is false, and I do not have an opinion on this. He went with the acting troupe of Frederick Ward, beginning a cross-country tour in September 1899. He toured with Award for two seasons, functioning in dual roles both as an actor at, and as the assistant stage manager in his second year with the group. After two years, he moved to New York, where he found his first Broadway role in Her Lord and Master, which premiered in February 1902. He worked in a hardware store and as a clerk in a Wall Street office between acting jobs. His Broadway appearances included the popular A Gentleman from Mississippi in 1908 to 1909. On July 1907, Fairbanks married Annabeth Solly, the daughter of wealthy industrial Daniel J. Solly in Watch Hill, Rhode Island. They had one son, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., also a noted actor. The family moved to Los Angeles in 1915. After moving to Los Angeles, Fairbanks signed a contract with Triangle Pictures in 1915 and began working under the supervision of D.W. Griffith. His first film was titled The Lamb, in which he debuted the athletic abilities that would gain him wide attention among theater audiences. His athleticism was not appreciated by Griffith, however, and he was brought to the attention of Anita Luce and John Emerson, who wrote and directed many of his early romantic comedies. In 1916, Fairbanks established his own company, the Douglas Fairbanks Film Corporation, and would soon get a job at Paramount, 
Fairbanks met actress Mary Pickford at a party in 1916, and the couple soon began an affair. In 1917, they joined Fairbanks' friend Charlie Chaplin, you probably heard of him before, uh, selling war bonds by train across the United States and delivering pro-war speeches as four-minute men. Pickford and Chaplin were the two highest paid film stars in Hollywood at the time. To curtail these stars' astronomical salaries, the large studios attempted to monopolize distributors and exhibitors. By 1918, Fairbanks was Hollywood's most popular actor, and within three years of his arrival, Fairbanks' popularity and business acumen raised him to the third highest paid. In 1917, Fairbanks capitalized on his rising popularity by publishing a self-help book, Laugh and Live, which extolled the power of positive thinking and self-confidence in raising one's health, business, and social prospects. To avoid being controlled by the studios and to protect their independence, Fairbanks, Pickford, Chaplin, and D.W. Griffith formed United Artists in 1919, which created their own distributorships and gave them complete artistic control over their films and the profits generated. Sully was granted a divorce from Fairbanks in the late 1918, the judgment being finalized early the following year. After the divorce, the actor was determined to have Pickford become his wife, but she was still married to actor Owen Moore. Fairbanks finally gave her an ultimatum. She then obtained a rapid divorce in the small Nevada town of Minden on March 2nd, 1920. Fairbanks leased the Beverly Hills mansion Gray Hall and was rumored to have used it during his courtship of Pickford. The couple married on March 28, 1920. Pickford's divorce from Moore was contested by Nevada legislators, however, and the dispute was not settled until 1922. Even though the lawmakers objected to the marriage, the public widely supported the idea of everybody's hero marrying America's sweetheart. That enthusiasm, in fact, extended far beyond the borders of the United States. Later, while honeymooning in Europe, Fairbanks and Pickford were warmly greeted to large crowds in London and Paris. Both internationally and at home, the celebrated couple were regarded as Hollywood royalty and became famous for entertaining at Pick Fair, their Beverly Hills estate. By 1920, Fairbanks had completed 29 films, 28 features, and one two-reel short, which showcased his ebullient screen persona and athletic ability. By 1920, he had the inspiration of staging a new type of adventure costume picture, a genre that was then out of favor with the public. Fairbanks had been a comic in his previous films. In The Mark of Zorro, Fairbanks combined his appealing screen persona with the new adventurous costume element. It was a smash success, and parlayed the actor in the rank of superstar. For the remainder of his career in silent films, he continued to produce and star in even more elaborate, impressive costume films, such as The Three Musketeers in 1921, Douglas Fairbanks in Robin Hood, 1922, The Thief of Baghdad, 1924, The Black Pirate in 1926, and The Gaucho in 1927. Fairbanks spared no expense and effort in these films, which established the standard for all future swashbuckling films. In 1921, he, Pickford, Chaplin, and others helped to organize the Motion Picture Fund to assist those in the industry who could not work or were unable to meet their bills. During the first ceremony of its type on April 30th, 1927, Fairbanks and Pickford placed their hand and footprints in wet cement at the newly opened Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood. In the classic comedy Blazing Saddles, Harvey Corman's villain character sees Fairbanks' prints at Grauman's and exclaims, how did he do such fantastic stunts with such little feet? Fairbanks was elected first president of the Motion Picture Academy of Arts and Sciences that same year, and he presented the first Academy Awards at the Roosevelt Hotel. Today, Fairbanks also has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 720 Hollywood Boulevard. While Fairbanks had flourished in the silent genre, the restrictions of early sound films dulled his enthusiasm for filmmaking. His athletic abilities and general health also began to decline at this time, in part due to his years of chain smoking. On March 29th, 1928, at Pickford's bungalow, United Artists brought together Pickford, Fairbanks, Charlie Chaplin, Norma Talmadge, 
Gloria Swanson, John Barrymore, D.W. Griffith, and Dolores Del Rio to speak on the radio show The Dodge Brothers Hour to prove Fairbanks could meet the challenge of talking movies. Fairbanks' last silent film was The Lavish, The Iron Mask in 1929, a sequel to the 1921 release The Three Musketeers. The Iron Mask included an introductory prologue spoken by Fairbanks. He and Pickford chose to make their first talkie as a joint venture, playing Petruchio and Kate in Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew in 1929. This film and his subsequent sound films were poorly received by Depression-era audiences. The last film in which he acted was the British production The Private Life of Don Juan in 1934, after which he retired from acting. Fairbanks and Pickford separated in 1933 after he began an affair with Sylvia Lady Ashley. Pickford had also been seen in the company of a high-profile industrialist. They divorced in 1936 with Pickford keeping the Pickfair estate. Fairbanks and Ashley were married in Paris in March 1936. He continued to be marginally involved in the film industry and the United Artists, but his later years lacked the intense focus of his film years. Fairbanks' health continued to decline at this point. During his final years, he lived at 705 Ocean Front, now Pacific Coast Highway, in Santa Monica, California, although much of his time was spent traveling abroad with his third wife, Lady Ashley. On December 12, 1939, Fairbanks sadly suffered a heart attack. He died later that day at his home in Santa Monica at the age of 56. His last words were reportedly, I've never felt better. That was a lot to take in. So how about I show you a little skit to relieve your boredom? Uh, this was performed by me uh, and some of my family members. This is my rendition on a silent film. Now here's some facts about Douglas Fairbanks and his impact on modern day society. First off, and I already talked about this, but Fairbanks highly influenced modern swashbuckling films. The reason so many people loved them in the 1920s was because people were searching for escapist adventure, historic romance, and daring stunts in cinemas. There is a vast quantity of modern swashbuckling films, uh, which I won't get into just now. Secondly, Fairbanks, who had an optimistic personality, helped Americans feel good about the future following World War I. Today, people are generally optimistic and emulate their Hollywood heroes, which I'm sure he contributed to. Finally, Fairbanks, along with Mary Pickford, helped establish the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences. The importance of this in modern day society is that you literally wouldn't be able to watch the Oscars on television today if it weren't for Douglas Fairbanks. We would have missed the Will Smith and Chris Rock debacle. I, I don't want to miss that. I hope this video taught you something and that you have enjoyed your time watching. Make sure to check out my other content, although I normally don't make videos like this. Uh, and also all of my sources for uh, my well, well, what I talked about are in the description. Same with the music, so I'm not copyright strike. Uh, well, thank you for watching, and bye bye.